Fudgy Gumpians, welcome to my fudgy laboratory. <laughs> this is where we are going to conduct most of our videos. Okay, I'll start with where this interest comes from. I've always been a bit of a philosopher, wondering why things are the way they are, never truly being satisfied with answers that have been given to me by people my age, adults, elders, whatever. I've fallen into religion and spirituality, superstition, whatever other non-provable thing there is. But I've never been truly satisfied with those. And if you're not satisfied with something, then find something that satisfies you. Nothing has satisfied me more than philosophy. And I believe philosophy is sort of the overarching theme between religion, spirituality, superstition, whatever. Therefore, I'm going to reach closer to the core of what makes sense and stick to philosophy. Now, as a human being, where should I start my philosophical research? Well, I can make personal investigations to my mind and body. That explains the videos about temptation or me trying to better my life. This video is... a bit less established in the physical world. This is territory for the mind, okay? So, if I've paid attention to how I feel in my body, I can then move to my mind, how I feel there. Let's think. <laughs> That's the first step, bro! The first step is thinking. So you start to pay attention to your mind. You see the ups and downs of emotions and feelings. Or you feel those uh, fucking senses. Damn. If we take a few steps further back, away from the uh, body and the surface level functions of the mind, then we get a little further into perception the relationship between mind and body it's in a video that I have the the relationship between the mind and the body where's my uh, relationship between the mind and the body looks a little something like this. The mind can think and then send a message to the body so that the body then starts taking action to fulfill the thoughts of the mind, or it can be the other way around. The body perceives and then the mind reacts to that perception. Now we're going to stay in that order.
where we're going to go with is the body, then to the mind. Now, what does the body send to the mind? The body uses the five senses. It uses the five senses to send input to the mind. What does the mind do with that input? Well, one big one is imagination. The five senses are more of an in-the-moment thing, and then we somehow carry memories with us. Okay, I'm already feeling like I don't understand what I'm talking about. Fudgy Gumpians, this is going to be a video that's going to be in a series, I believe. It's going to be the Let Him Cook series. I'm trying to figure out the best way for me to come up with a script for a video, but I believe the best way is for me to actually see it, sort of plan it out. But, I'm not planning out the script necessarily, I'm planning out the philosophy. And I'm just going to start from the first step, in my opinion. I need to read first, actually. Let him cook. Okay, we've made it this far to four different functions of the mind. Uh, one of the functions of the mind is imagination. Try imagining... Okay, try to imagine a centaur. You don't have to, because I'll draw it for you. But with the centaur, you take... Horse. <laughs> I'm misspelling a shit today. Horse plus human. So, to come up with an idea of a centaur, aka half human, half horse, we have taken two original ideas that we are familiar with in the image that we are imagining right now. We take, an we take a vision of a human, we take an image of a human, and we take an image of a horse and put them together in our minds when we are trying to imagine something. We are taking perceptions that we have already made in the past and taking the memory of those and combining them together. You can think of a golden mountain. Try imagining a golden mountain right now. When imagining that golden mountain, you have taken the idea of gold and you have taken the idea of a mountain. Hold on. Hold on. I need to watch how I say idea. Not idea. You are taking a previous perception of a mountain, aka you saw the mountain and you know the color gold, you just sort of put those together.
So what this tells me is that imagination is dependent on the relationship between the mind and the body. Without the body to perceive these things, what is left? That's a really good question. Where should we write this? Check that one. the red again. Okay, imagination requires the mind and the body is a solid conclusion that we can come to on the topic of imagination. Now, if imagination requires the mind and the body, what happens when we take the mind... Ooh, What happens when we take the body out of that equation? So we'll do question mark equals minus the body. This is what I'm trying to figure out here, this question mark. Blank equals imagination minus the body. Well, if we come back up here, imagination minus the body is the mind. What's so special about that? Okay, there are smaller aspects of the mind that I want to pay attention to. Actually, no, 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 no. That question mark there is there for a reason. That question mark is there because I am not quite sure how the mind can function without perception. That question mark is how, that question mark is asking how the mind functions without perception. That question, this question mark represents the functions of the mind without perception. Ooh, let me write it that way. The functions of the mind without perception. Okay, so you could call it thinking, but I don't know what that means. 
the function of the mind without perception. That's an interesting one. Okay, so a question we could ask ourselves is, how do we think of a concept without perception? If you want to think of a cat, we'll stick with horses actually. Functions of the mind without perception. Okay, so if we try to imagine a horse, then we could think about all of these other aspects of a horse. This is about to look weird. You know what, no, we'll have a separate list. We'll have a separate list here. of horse. Okay, so if we think of a horse, we think of animal. It is an animal. Four legs. The mane, okay, I've already got a problem with this. I'm thinking of a horse and I've come up with, imagine this, close your eyes, an animal with four legs and a mane. Now think about that. That could be a lion, that could be blah, 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 blah. So yeah, there are a lot more here. ETC. So now, let's take the green and mark off things that we cannot describe the horse with because they are from perception and not the mind. So to see So if you think of a mane, that is because you've seen a horse before and you've seen a mane. Uh, if you haven't seen a mane before, then you'd probably try to imagine what that looks like by taking familiar memories and compiling it onto a couple other perceptions that you've made and coming up with an idea of a horse. It could be completely wrong. And it's not an idea of a horse. It's a, pers it's, it's a thought of a horse. Ugh, these words are hard to use. Okay, so let's go to the top here. A horse is an animal. How can we tell that a horse is an animal? What is an animal? Okay. To even understand what an animal is, let's actually do that.
Uh, this is a loose definition of an animal, but it's the only one that I need to make my point, my eventual point. What is an animal? It is a living creature. Okay, how do we tell if something is alive? Well, you can check its pulse, you can hear it still saying things, you can see it moving around. Listen to the words I used to think of what a living creature actually is. They all involve perception. So a quick assumption that I could jump to is that Holy fuck. With a living creature, a question that we can ask is how do we determine life? As I just said. A new question. determine the living without perception. German living. That's wrong. That's wrong. Someone explains life and death. Perception. And the reason this perception is because there's a little audio sound. Okay. Oh my god. Okay, death. Let's think about death for a second. The only way to know death to no death. This is getting crazy, isn't it? How to no death. Holy shit! That's what I'm looking for right there. How to know death? Since we are living right now, we have associated ideas to death that seem to be based off of our perception of it. We have never actually experienced death. This is a very important part of the argument of how do you know you can die? Oh, I've died and come back to life in the hospital before. You didn't fully die, okay? Do it all the way. Come back and tell me how it was. What happened? Personal experience. So...
living. Dying. Okay, now we have living and dying here. Concepts. Say that for later. Conceptualize. We have living and dying. Let's pay attention to the mind. While we are living, Uh, this, the note, okay, while we are living, the functions of the mind, let me say that again. When we are living, we have the functions of the mind that we're aware of, and perception. Perception grants a lot of abilities to the mind, such as imagination. Imagination, reason. This is an interesting one. After death, where does the mind go? Well, we cannot perceive that. We're getting somewhere very interesting here. Where does the mind go? It's not a location. Why is it not a location? Because a location can be perceived. Not a... So where does the mind go? Not a location. A location can be perceived. Now, what is an opposing theory to where the mind goes? The mind and the body could be eternally attached in some fashion. As in, imagine I die, my body is in the ground, and then my mind is, my mind still remains However, it would be blinded with the functions of the body that I once knew. An 
Interesting. So with this, that just means in some way, sh in, in some fashion, the mind just is. Wow. You ever heard of I... I am, I think, therefore I am. Now talk about a weird phrase that I don't understand quite yet, but you know what? I can understand this, the mind is, okay? That's it, period, the mind is. Yeah, this one's a little hard to follow. Looks like a damn roller coaster. But can the mind be without the body? How do I figure that out? Can the mind be without the body? Well, one way to figure that out requires dying. No, it doesn't require dying. Try removing all of the senses to find out whether the mind can be without the body or not. Okay, so we take away our feel, we take away our hearing, we take away our taste, we take away our visual. Uh, I need to start counting these out on my hand, bro. I always mess them up. How to determine living without perception? How to know death? Personal experience. Dying. Where does the mind go? Not a location. A location can be perceived. Can the mind be without the body? Should I explain what it means to be? Okay. I'm going to explain this in layman's terms. means for the mind to be. Am I really going to have to use the word exists?
what it means for the mind to be. Come on. Think big here, buckaroo. This might be the question that we leave off on for today. What it means for the mind to be. The mind has independent functions. Now what that means and what I'm trying to ask is what functions does the mind have that do not require the body? Yeah, we're going to leave it at that. Uh, I'm just going to spout off a few things that I'm kind of thinking of right now. With blue marker down here. Um, the mind has independent functions, question mark. Uh, well, you got to kind of think of those. Reason. Okay, now the reason I mention this is because reason is like when you see the moon up in the sky. The moon is not this big. The moon is apparently fucking massive. But how do we come to the conclusion that the moon is actually large and farther away? Through reason. And... Where's the red? I love the red. Mind doesn't exist in Mind doesn't exist in perceivable space. There's no location. So, what does that mean? The mind doesn't exist in perceivable space. Uh, that should give you a better idea of what it means for the mind to just be, rather than for the mind to exist in your brain or something like that. The mind doesn't exist in perceivable space. There's no location. Reason requires space to exist in plus perceived input. Reason requires space to exist in.
Okay, I think we're about to move into concepts for the next one. However, this is some progress here, okay? What it means for the mind to be. The mind has independent functions, question mark. I haven't got that far yet. The mind doesn't exist in perceivable space. There's no location for the mind. It just is. Uh, one thing that I want to talk about later is reasoning. Uh, how we reason. How far or close things are away, whether they're big or small, whatever. Reason requires space to exist in plus perceived input. Seeing the moon and... The space in which that moon is or a distance between something now I'm gonna say something that might really fuck with your mind so look at all this shit Uh, I'll say it later. I'm talking about the words, by the way, um, for a future fudgy. Um, how language is pretty much just the most bullshit form of communication. Speaking. Yeah, it's a function that we have, but... Imagine a life with no form of... Communication. Interesting. Okay, there's a better way to phrase this first bullet point. The mind has independent functions. Let's change this statement to something a bit more agreeable. Hold on. Here's what I'm thinking now. What is a function of the mind So if there are independent functions of the mind, then that would conclude that the mind is able to be separate from the body. However, all of the functions of the mind that I am considering all require perception. We're erasing that arrow because I still don't quite know. Uh, maybe we'll get it back. And the mind okay my new question to rephrase the first bullet point is can the mind function without perception
Now we're back to this question, functions of the mind. You have M plus B is mind and body. Okay, what's another function? We have reason. Well, if we look down here, reason requires space to exist in plus perceived input. Uh, the distance between you and the moon plus reason concludes that the moon is large and far away rather than closer and very small. So that right there is a function of the mind. However, it is rooted within the body. Okay, what's another reason? Or what's another What's another function of the mind? What is a concept? Okay. A function, or sorry. With reason, we have to understand a couple of concepts, such as distance. With reason, we have to understand concepts. These are three examples of concepts that we have an idea of that we've sort of subconsciously amalgamated, I'm, ass I'm assuming I use that word correctly, that we subconsciously slap together to come up with reasoning. Distance, size, and relativity of perception. Uh, what I mean by these is, like down here, I said distance requires space to exist in, the area the plane of existence between one point and another now that plane can be 2d it can be 3d But these, these thoughts of the mind are outside of your classic XYZ grid. It's almost as if it's not there. What's another function of the mind? Okay, here's another concept that I want to dive into. Let's see. I wrote 2 plus 2 down here. So, universally, it is 2 plus 2 equals 4. That would be considered true. This is from Descartes, by the way. Let me get the book. The argument between 2 plus 2 being a universal truth is from Descartes. Now, how can we conclude that 2 plus 2 is in fact 4? 
Well, you might say, uh, we know it, but let's do a little, let's do something a little different here. How do we know what two is? This is a disclaimer. For a lot of the things that I'm going to talk about, you need to put yourself inside of the shoes of somebody with no sight, no hearing, no taste, no feeling, and no smell. That's the fifth one. You need to put yourself in this perspective because once you have removed all of those perceptions, you are officially with the mind. Now, whether the mind utilizes those, ah, fuck. Uh, but let's go back to two plus two. How did you learn what two was? Well, you may have started with your fingers. One is one. You think of things that represent one. Those are things. This number is a thing. You need to be able to see the number. Okay, so 2 plus 2 is 4. We could ask what is 2, but what if we did this? Two plus three equals four. Now let's think back to the cent oh hold on a second. I was gonna say let's think back to the centaur and how you thinking of the centaur is different from somebody else's ima you imagining the centaur is different from somebody else somebody else's imagination imagined image of the centaur this could be the same exact thing here is your here's your imagined depiction of the centaur and here's somebody else's imagined depiction of the centaur. Now, a question we need to ask here is what do these numbers mean? Okay, so a reasonable question to ask what is two? Now, look at what I am questioning here. Isn't this kind of ridiculous? I'm questioning two plus two equals four. That's kind of weird. But from what from two plus two equals four, we first have to ask before assuming this is correct, what is two? Now, how do we come up with the idea of two? We start with our fingers. You could see a dot. You could hear somebody say two. You could feel braille. But these are all forms of communication that require the body. We can't know two without first perceiving two. So yes, while the idea of two has already been established, it was not established individually by our mind. 
it was established with a combination of bodily perceptions and memorization from us so that we can and additional understanding so that we can truly know too. I'm about to blow your fucking socks off. Okay, so we came to the conclusion that two is man-made, which means that it's not a universal concept. Now think about this. The word two was man-made to give us an idea of something else that is man-made. So now, the words that we use to think. So the words that we use to think, whenever I'm thinking in my head, I'm speaking in my own voice almost. And there are associated meanings to these words. Therefore, we can use these words to then formulate something. The mind seems similar, the mind, the mind seems simpler than thinking. We have sort of overcomplicated the mind by associating the body with it. And by associating all these other things that people have already created before we were already born, allegedly. 
Mine seems simpler than you're thinking. Now this is straight up just an assumption. It seems, that's why I capitalized that. Mine seems. Seems is very important. It means it's not a solid conclusion. Where do you think associated meaning? Relative. Let's jump back to these associated meanings. Uh, a lot of these words, like nouns, are used to give people an image or an idea. Okay, I've written 2 plus 3 equals 4. Plus three equals four. If I were taught that growing up, I would believe that two plus three equals four. Now, I guess an argument for this is, well, my idea of two and my idea of three are different. That does not equate. Now, my idea of two and my idea of three have been established by perception. It's been ingrained in my head. of what these numbers truly are. But if I were able to believe that 2 plus 3 equals 4, then I could then prove that the mind is able to be fooled. Now, think about this. Oh my god! The mind is able to be fooled. Holy shit. The mind is able to be fooled by who or by what, you may ask. The body. Holy shit. Now, that is a big realization because that is action taken by the body and then sent to the mind. But now, why... Why can the mind be fooled? Well, let's dip back into what we've been talking about for a while now. Satisfy balance between the mind and the body. Imagine this. And yes, you can imagine this. So, here's the mind on its own. Your focus is 100% on the mind and its individual independent functions, whatever those may be, if they exist. Otherwise, the mind is nothing. Independently. How the fuck is the body independent, but... Wait, maybe it's not. So, you put 100% focus into the mind. All of a sudden, a body shows up and limits your mind. From that point on, there needs to be a balance. Otherwise, in examples I've listed in my relationship between the mind and the body video, uh, things will start to go wrong.
these are some very interesting realizations. This is an assumption, honestly, the bottom sets by the balance between the mind and the body. Actually, no, it's not. It's really not an assumption because the mind would already have to be there, or the mind would already have to be. Well, if the mind is. So why can the mind be full? To satisfy the balance between the mind and the body if the mind functions independently. If the mind doesn't function independently, then we literally are just this one individual. We are nothing more than the body. That's not what I want to hear. I'm gonna fucking Google search this shit.